I'm not going to sing the song. <laughs> I'm not. Really? With, with all the 80s songs that are crowbarred in this movie, you aren't going to sing one of them? What, no, well, I might sing one of them. I'm not probably saying anything yet. You know, if oh, the, you mean the, 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 the titular the, song? The titular Eddie Money song. You Do, do you know why I'm not going to sing that song? Because it's been stuck in your head ever since you saw this movie. No, because it just sucks. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's actually a lot of good music in this movie, at least for, I guess, people like me who grew up, who grew up in the 80s who are approximately the age of the people in this film. Sure. More or less. They were, I guess, a, a couple years older than I was in, uh, I guess this is like 1988, I think is when this movie is supposed to take place. Oh, is 88 when it takes place? Yeah, 1988. Uh, Oh, okay. But, you know, I mean, I guess I would have been 18. They were like 23, maybe, 24. I mean, it's funny because you look at the commercials and it looks like a high school movie. It It it, totally does. You know what? I had trouble trying to figure that out. I'm like, is this a high school movie? Because this music's after... That period, okay, so they're, it's like it's they've come out of high school, but not that much further. Like, they've just got out of college. Yeah, they're but, just out of college. But if they're having a high school reunion, which must be like their four-year reunion or yeah, something. Well, it's, it's like a... It's like the final coming of age story, you know, because they've <laughs> yeah. seen a lot of there's a lot of steps of those coming of age stories. And this is like the last one you're still allowed to say, OK, I'm not quite at adulthood, but I'm right there. It's, it's coming of age with people with arrested development. Yeah. The, like the way like people don't want to grow up now and keep like, you know, delaying it. Oh, it's I thought that, it was 40. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's just another one of those. It's, that's, yeah. One of those stops. When they go back and they make movies about this era, they'll be able to still have those. Yeah. You know, it's like it's time to grow up. You're 50 now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, 50. I can't be fucking around anymore. <laughs> oh, come on, Mom. I don't want to get a job. I got to get serious and get responsible. <laughs> but, Half my life's over. Uh, you know, this film could have been called That Late 80s Show because it's actually written by the That 70s Show uh, uh, writers, strangely enough. Uh, you know, well, then that makes it because they did do a uh, That 80s Show. Which oh yeah bombed which pretty quickly. Not even a season, I don't think. Oh no 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 yeah. no. I mean, I, they may have aired five episodes of it. Was it that little? Okay. Yeah yeah. It, it was very little, and it's almost like he went like, well, I think it's a good idea, and I'm going to do something with it. And people, or it got canceled. It's like, oh man, you ought to make a movie out of all this great material you got. You know what? I think I will. And um, no, you shouldn't have. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, it's and another thing here is that this was finished in two thousand and seven. Well, I tell you what, I could tell because uh, one of the actors, the guy who plays, uh, I think his character is Kyle. He's on that show Parks and Recreation, mm-hmm. where he's clearly a lot older and heavier. Because in, in this movie, his character looks very young, and on Parks and Recreation, he looks so much older and almost a little bit chunky. Yeah. So I was like, this had to have been made years ago. Well, you can tell with almost everyone in it. For one thing, it's just where Topher Grace's career was at 2007. Yes. As opposed to where it is now, where he they were still trying to put him in uh, these type of roles then, and now he's trying to be more. He's been trying to be more dramatic since then. Right. But let's talk about what this film is actually about. Okay, other than the '80s, which once again, this could be. I remember the '80s, the movie. Hey, it's got uh, Ian Michael Black in it. I thought for <laughs> sure that's what it was. <laughs> but uh, it follows uh, Matt, played by Topher Grace, and his twin sister, if you can believe that, since they're like separated by six feet in height or something. You know, I mean, it's just ridiculous. And it's got to be a, a, uh, a major age difference between the two. Right. Uh, Wendy, played by Anna Faris, who, uh-huh. I, who I always like. Sure. I always like Anna Faris. And uh, basically, they're, they both graduated from college, except Matt has no idea what he wants to do. Well, he graduated he's, from MIT. Yeah, he graduated top of the class. I mean, he's like, uh, he could be a badass. He could be an engineer. Yes. And his father, Michael Bien, you know. Ben. Bane. Bane. Is it Ben? Bane. Bane? Yeah. I now say I've got Tom Hardy. Or is Hardy it Bean? In. It's Bane. It's one of those. It's Bane or Bean. Tom I think Hardy it's, I think in my head Bane. all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, he's very disappointed with, with him, basically. As, as you would be. I mean, yeah. you, 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 you spent half your money for your son to go to the, the most prestigious college. He comes out with these great grades, and then he can't figure out what to do with his life. Yeah, he wants so to he, work at Suncoast Video. And he works at a Suncoast Video. Yeah, for you kids who aren't old enough. That, <laughs> they used to have these things it, called videos, and they would put them in, <laughs> in malls where you could go buy movies. Yeah, it was a knockoff blockbuster that was only in the malls. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was only in the malls, <laughs> wasn't it? Uh, so he's just kind of, you know, blindsiding his way through life. He's got his best friend played uh, played by Dan Fogler, who, who there's another. Oh, really? That wasn't Jack Black. I know. But th- there's another key. He wasn't f- as fat as he is now either. Watching, I was like, oh well, yeah. He, I could have sworn that guy was fatter. It's like, oh well, don't worry, he will be. <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> but he's playing exactly the role you'd expect him to be. Yes, he the, he's the like. Okay, Jack Black's not picking up our calls, and and we got to start shooting Friday. Get Dan Fogler, right? Who is really the like the pro the the new 
baby fetus Jack Black. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, man, Fogler, I hate to break it to you, but we're already sick of Jack Black. I, I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right? Uh, and he's like the party stupid guy, stupid friend who you know is not, never going to go anywhere with his life. Yeah. But he's the, he's the sort of the, the, the friend that's making, uh, a Topher Grace's character hang on to his adolescence more than anything else. It's, it's, it, you know, it's, it's kind of a movie cliche that actually mimics real life in that most guys have a complete fuck up friend who they shouldn't be friends with and if they have a girlfriend that the girlfriend hates that friend but you're just loyal to him anyway. Right. You, you keep him around. Of course, Matt doesn't have a girlfriend because he's one of those people doing the worst thing of all. And I'm talking to some of you Spillians out there, you know who you are, who have told me, oh, but I'm so in love with this one girl. Yeah. You got to you gotta drop that shit, man. That's a, that's some Hollywood fantasy thing. Um, and that's what Matt, that's what Matt Topher Grace's character is doing. He's obsessed with the girl who was nice to him in sixth grade. And yes. And has not been able to move on since then. It, it, like when he tells a story of the time they almost hooked up even when he blew it then but how she was nice to him okay it's a sweet story but when you add up the time from when that story happened to where he is now stunted in his development it's just pathetic beyond words and this is a uh, teresa palmer who i admit is really hot i could sure see if you were well, she was the girl at uh the sorcerer's apprentice wasn't she uh yeah and i am number four. Oh, okay yeah she was one of the a- aliens in there apparently Really? Yeah, well, that's what it says in Wikipedia, anyway. Okay. That's, that's <laughs> odd, but... All right. uh, yeah, she's been in a couple other really crappy movies, like 237. I don't know if you ever saw it. No. Awful, awful movie. Bedtime Stories with Adam Sandler. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah! I know you tried to block that out. Yes, I did. Sorry to... <laughs> tried really hard to block that out. Trying to bring that... Sorry to bring that hell Ugh, rushing back into dude. your consciousness. But, uh, you know what? So, it's... He's just talking to his friends. I mean, it, it, all right, it, it throws it in there so fast that this is the plot setup. I mean, it's like people having the same conversation that if you put this in the context of real life, they must have had 10 billion fucking times. You would smack anybody who wouldn't stop having the same goddamn yes. conversation of exposition just so we know he's obsessed with this girl. So we know Anna Ferris is going to get engaged to some fratty douchebag yeah. type guy, except she also has dreams of being a writer and going off to college in London. Yes. You know, I mean, they're trying to set up a John Hughesian situation here and it's so obvious that 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 that's what they're doing and they're not doing it in sort of a hey look it's an 80s movie so we're spoofing john hughes they're not doing it like that they're doing it like we're hoping we can make a movie like a john hughes yeah i mean that's the thing uh i mean like the the you know the knowing wink like i don't like too much of that but i like a little bit yeah It, it you know it shows that the movie has a brain and i like it's like there's a part of me that wants to say okay maybe i'll give you credit in that you're making an 80s movie that's based in the 80s sorta and you know uh, you know a, a little check mark for trying but it is so obvious and ham-fisted and need i say unnecessary yeah i mean the story there's nothing about it that says it needs to be set in the 80s at all it could be well, why not set it now why not set it in a four? It, it it's it's nothing special about it except they went like hey people love this it, you know people from the 80s will get a kick out of it and like, well, no, actually, Hot Tub Time Machine actually had a way of doing that, of like celebrating and making fun of it at the same time. But the thing is, this is kitschier looking than the Hot Tub Time Machine. Sure. Because there you actually see normal looking people who are just dressed normally, wearing jeans and a T-shirt, whatever. Because there were people who always just dress and look like they do in every era. You right. You know, nothing extreme. Here, everybody has a poofed haircut and yeah. neon clothes. And it's like, it is like walking around in a thrift store that's devoted to nothing but the, the 80s. And it's it's just false. It rings so false. It's not done to be funny. It's done because somebody didn't have a clue what they were fucking doing. Right. And it just seemed like there's a there's that point somewhere later in the film where it, it, it almost like it got dropped. Like it just wasn't even a part of it anymore. Yeah. And just the, the plot, it, it really is just so cookie cutter. But, man... I, I went in this thinking, like, I'm not expecting much. It's low rated on, on Rotten Tomatoes, and it's probably just okay. And I ended up just really, really not liking it. I was just I was just bored, mostly. And they just don't write characters that are likable, really, at all. I mean, Topher Grace, his whole, the way, you know, the, the stuttering, you know, uh, shtick that he goes into, yeah. it's frustrating. It's like there's nothing clever or even identifiable about it well here's the problem with that exactly is that they make him start off being you know the thing we always hate where we say we hate where people tell lies when there's no reason to tell lies yeah. and no sane person would do that they just don't communicate uh no i work at goldman sachs no you don't 
No way you work there. No, I do. I uh, work in Asian takeovers. That's funny, because you know where I work? You work at Goldman Sachs? You bet your legs I do. You don't need to walk to speculate currencies. I said you don't need to walk to speculate currencies! What do you do, anyway? I thought you went to MIT. I work at Suncoast Video. Wow. Congratulations. Mom and Dad must be psyched. I'm gonna get out of here. Check this out, Moonwalk. And in this film, it's because he sees the girl walking into his store, the Suncoast, the girl he's crazy about. So he goes and runs outside through the back door, strips off his employee uniform so he just looks like a normal guy, came, comes back in and tells her, you know, oh, yeah, no, I have this great job. I work for Goldman Sachs. My life is great. And, uh, you know, they set up basically to meet at the big party going on that night, yeah. coincidentally at the house of the guy who his sister is, is yeah. dating, which is weird because do you, at that point he didn't know about that party. I know. I, I, I was like, wait a minute. It's like, how did he not know about that party? <laughs> it's because it's bad writing. That's how. Anyway, so it's the gang going out there. They steal a car. They do stuff that there's just men no, that's just past, but be, your anyone's sense of belief why they yeah, would yeah, do Yeah, clearly this. in this reality in Los Angeles, you can commit all kinds of crime, uh, vandalism, and grand theft of private property, and there's no one around. To uh to to arrest you or call you on it. Apparently, post apocalyptic L A. <laughs> yeah. which looks a lot like 1988 in <laughs> okay. somebody's mind who was only seen. I remember the 80s, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe that's what hell is. I don't know. I mean, it very much well could be some of that hair. <laughs> Uh, you know, but you know, a lot of this turns into exactly what you'd expect, which is a series of parties that they go to uh, that represent various people's imaginations of what the 80s yes. were like over and over again. I mean, it's just, there's like the swinger couple. There's an incredible excess of like jokes about cocaine. Yeah. You're like, man, I knew like three people who did coke in the late 80s. You know? <laughs> it's not like we were all walking around with powder on our faces. Uh, you know, not most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, though, is despite all that, there's a point about three quarters of the way th through this film where it actually started to kind of win me back from this. Really? I was really bored, and I really didn't like these characters, but there's a point where it started to acknowledge the things that it was doing wrong, sort of. It was like inside the story itself, it, it felt like it was acknowledging uh, the problems that, 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 that it had. And I don't know. I mean, I guess it was like that seeing the main character make peace with the fact that he was an asshole and an idiot kind of warmed my heart a little bit, at least. Okay. Um, and there were some funny sequences towards the end I thought made me laugh. None of it was realistic. Uh, and I will say this. And this comes from the heart of a Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan, uh -oh. is that Buffy's younger sister, Dawn, Michelle Trachtenberg, is in here. I love Michelle Trachtenberg. Yeah, I do, too. And she's playing the hottest girl in this entire True. fucking film. She's like the, the total goth who, for reasons unbeknownst to anyone, is at the jockey party. I don't right. know. She's like the one yeah, goth it, yeah, it makes there. no sense that she's there. <laughs> no sense at all. But she's super hot. Like, at that whole party, if, if 1988 and I was the guy obsessed with the girl, it would have been her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you're like, yay, keep showing more of Michelle Trachtenberg. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I wish I had better things to say about this, because like I said, I like the score, and I think that the... I love the when one of these movies can do this sort of thing right. Like, Can't Hardly Wait, which I thought was a... You know what, dude? That's exactly what I kept thinking. I was like, Can't Hardly Wait is the blueprint on how you do one of these movies. Yeah. Where it's the party, things go crazy, and it's the guy who's obsessed with the girl that he's always been in love with, and he gets the girl. Yeah, that one hits it. You know what, you know what you're in for. It goes through all the motions that are familiar and yet it works yes it, every character is charming everyone's motivation makes sense yeah the, the the zany parts you laugh at but they don't take away from the story yeah uh, here they're trying to balance straddle this line between look this is like a real story it really feels like this could happen and 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 you know just ridiculous antics yeah uh and it, it just generally falls flat on its face in a way that you kind of you're embarrassed for it watching it Man, you really summed up <laughs> so many things of how I felt about this movie. It was just kind of an embarrassment. And, you know, I look at it, I go like, you know what? The production values aren't bad. No. And you have actually a pretty good cast. I mean, at least Topher Grace is charming. And this is the kind of role you would think he'd be perfect for. You know, Anna Faris is, is always pretty good. Yeah. Um, way underused, though. Her yes. character and her plot. Yeah, she plot, disappears for long periods yeah, her, of the movie. Yeah, her plot is a, a, like felt like it could have been cut entirely from this film and nothing would have been, you know, lessened by it. In fact, it might have been improved by cutting her subplot. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I suppose so. I mean, yeah, you could have lost her 
And Dan Fogler, who's there to like make you laugh, and go, I love that guy comes on. You you kind of don't. Yeah, not really. He he's he's just annoying. He's he's doing things that no friend would really even no friend would put up with that. Yeah. And, and the stuff he does, the antics, the the things, the way they break the law and don't acknowledge it. I, I probably that's probably what bugged me the most is how many things went went unacknowledged. Not just the breaking the law, destruction of private property, but the fact that you know you come when you get right down to it. Um, Tova Grace is in love with this girl because she's pretty and she's mad at him because he's not actually a banker, but she fully admits that, Hey, if I didn't hadn't believed your lie, I would never have talked with you, you know, maybe talked to you, but there's no, no point does she look at herself and go like, wow, that was real shitty of me. I know. It's like, you want to go, can we just both agree that we're both completely shallow people and, yeah. and move on from there and have shallow children together? And- yes. <laughs> or or, or at, 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 least, at least acknowledge our bullshit and maybe yeah. try to start over from there. Or like, hey, you know what? We just had a lot of cool stuff happen. Why are you getting hung up on this one thing? Well, have you, you've seen, of course, that cartoon that's been going around with the fights, b- comparison of a fight between a man and a woman when the man does something wrong and a woman does something wrong? <laughs> yes. Right? We're, we're both of the men with the man going i'm sorry <laughs> right <laughs> it, it, it is totally that yeah yeah um I, you know what man i i tell you i i don't like hating on movies especially when they aren't really supposed to be like they aren't trying to do something big but i just don't really have anything good to say about this mm-hmm. i mean i came out of it going like wow i'm not angry about it if there's any positive thing i could say but it was a complete waste of my time and I have to give it some old bullshit. Wow. That's that's pretty harsh. I'm not quite that bad on it, main, partially because I did enjoy the soundtrack, and it's ever-present in here. I mean, believe me, they're plugging it in constantly, and most of the songs in it, you know, with the exception of the title, are pretty good 80s songs. I'm like, yeah, I love this song, man. So I'm enjoying it on a, a listening to my iPod level on some degree, and there are some jokes here and there that work, and there are some character things I thought were a little charming, and I thought towards the end it did kind of find a heart. So I'm going to give it a low rental, and okay. I feel like that is uh that is the uh, exactly how I felt about it. Okay, not being low rentals, cool. high some old bullshit. <laughs> high some old bullshit. I mean, the thing is, like, like the songs, even though they're they're good songs, they're such the hit songs at any station that plays oldies. It's only the songs they play. It's no. not anything even remotely resembling a deep cut or some of the the really the better better music of the eighties. No, you're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, like when you called it the I love the eighties, it's all that stuff they play in the background on, on those. It is. It is. Um so I guess it depends on how much you love the eighties. <laughs> Yeah. Or how much you think you love how the much, 80s. You know what? That's what it is. If you're somebody who, who likes to go like, man, the 80s was so crazy, even though you never actually lived through them. Yeah, then you might sh- actually kind of enjoy this. Sh- sure. But if you're somebody who actually lived through the 80s, then you will you will not feel nostalgic because of this film at all. Yeah. Not, not for the 80s, anyway. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> not not in the least bit. That's not how I remember it. <laughs>